So as a review that you just did in, in the GIM kit, there are properties of exponents. Now this is not all of them, but this is the ones that I care about for today. The first property of exponent is called the product property. When we're using the product property, it tells us that if we are multiplying bases that are the same, all we have to do is add their exponents. So there's an acronym we're gonna start building amongst these properties. For the product property, we're gonna say when we multiply, we add. Multiply becomes adding. So that's multiplying bases, you add the exponents. So for example, if you have x to the fifth times x to the third, you add them, that's x to the eighth. If you have x, two to the x and two to the third, you still add those exponents, the bases stay the same, so it's two to the x plus three. Boom. There is a second property that is not listed on this paper and it's called the quotient property. And it basically says that if you are dividing bases with powers, you subtract the exponents. So that's divide, subtract. And then we have a property we care about for this class called the power property. And you guys nailed this one on the game kit as well. If you have a power raised to a power, what do you do with those powers? Multiply. So it's like you do power to a power means multiply. That's the wrong color. Let me try that again. Power to a power means multiply. Have y'all heard of this mad spam acronym before? So it's a way to remember the main three exponent properties. Multiply, add, divide, subtract, power to a power, multiply. Mad spam. This is helpful, especially when we get into logarithms in the second part of this unit, because this acronym stays the same. Mad spam. But again, you see the examples down there. You have x to the fifth raised to the third. That's x to the 15th, because you multiply them. 2 to the x raised to the third is 2 to the 3x. Again, multiply them. Another exponent property uh, that's not a part of the acronym but is very important is called the negative exponent property. Basically, we don't like to leave our answers with negative exponents, so we clean it up and we move that exponent down to the bottom of a fraction so it becomes the denominator base with the positive power. So for example, here let's highlight the important things here. For example, if you have x to the negative three power, it becomes one over x cubed. So you just move the whole base and power to the bottom, change the sign. Same thing if you have two to the negative x power, that's one over two to the x. And vice versa, you can always take something out of the denominator by making it exponent negative. The last exponent property that a lot of people uh, forget about and or ignore, it's fine, is called the rational exponent property or the radical property of exponents. Basically, if you have a fractional exponent, a rational exponent, you can rewrite that as a root where the denominator of the fraction is the type of root you are taking. So for example, if you have x to the 1 half power, that's a square root because there's a 2 right here as your index of that radicand. Radical, just said the wrong word. If you have 2 to the 1 third power, since the 3 is the denominator, that is the cube root of 2. And on and on, no matter what it is that's the denominator of that power, that becomes the root of the radical that you are using. Do these exponent properties sound familiar to you? Hopefully they should. So let's also review something else before we get into today's topic. Let's review topic 1.12, which was all about transformations of functions. Remember when we did transformations, transformations that occurred inside the function were horizontal transformations, and transformations that were outside the functions were vertical. So if you notice, we're transforming exponential functions each time. If I zoom in on number one, this says four to the x plus two. That means I have taken the function four to the x and I've done what to it? What have I added to this function? Plus two, is that on the inside of the function or on the outside of the function? So great question here. The inside of an exponential function is up in the exponent. So because this entire thing is up in the exponent, this is going to be, I'm pointing at stuff and it's not showing me. Since this is all in the exponent, it is inside the function. So this pl x plus two is affecting the inside of the function. So what we've done here is we've taken four to the x and we have horizontally translated it Two units a direction. Which direction did we move it if you see plus two on the inside? Ooh, 1.12, that was a while ago. 
to the left. Very good, because inside is opposite, even though plus normally looks like a positive direction or a right direction, it's the opposite for insides, horizontal, inside, opposites. Okay, let's see another one. This time for B, we have g of x equal 2 to the 3x power. So what we've taken is the typical 2 to the x function, and what have we done to this function? How did I change it when it became g of x? Multiplied by 3. Did I multiply by 3 on the outside or inside? Inside. So that means that this is a horizontal dilation. It has been horizontally dilated by a factor of what? One third, very good. Horizontal inside and opposite, you use the reciprocal value of that number. So even though I see a three there, that means I'm multiplying by a third. Horizontally dilated by a factor of one third. Okay, so what we can do is now we can look at exponential functions and pull out the type of transformation we've done to those. Can you guys do that for letters C and D here? This is still just essentially in our review of topic 1.12, that's transformations of functions. Write down what the original function was and what we've done to it to make the function written on the paper. Okay, for letter C, what was the original function that we have transformed? 9 to the x, yeah. Okay, and what have we done to 9 to the x? Very good. We've horizontally dilated by a factor of 2. Now the music is too loud. I'll go turn it down in a second. Now what about D? What was the original function here that we have transformed? 5 to the x, and what have we done to it? Very good. We have horizontally translated it one unit to the right. Awesome. Okay, so that's our review section of today's class. We had our review of exponent rules, which was up at the top. We have our review of topic 1.12, which was transformations. Now notice, we only really reviewed horizontal transformations because that is a really important moment for exponential function manipulation. Here's the gist of what we're learning today, these two boxes right here. We can combine those two ideas, meaning we can use the product property, which we've highlighted in pink if you're following my highlighting technique. We can use the product property to show that every horizontal translation of an exponential function, b to the x plus h, is equivalent to a vertical dilation of the same exponential function when you multiply it b to the h times b to the x. This changes the initial value of the exponential function. Here's what this looks like and why this matters. So if you notice, we have x plus h inside the exponent. So it's up there in exponent world. We can rewrite this using the power property backwards as b to the h times b to the x, which changes the initial value of our function. Let me show you what this looks like before we're confused. Here is the same function we had in letter A from the review. You told me already that this was a horizontal translation two units to the left. But if I rearrange this using the power property, I can actually rewrite this as 4 to the second power multiplied by 4 to the x power. Pow when you're multiplying the bases, you're adding the exponents. So if I'm adding the exponents, I am just simply multiplying the bases. Well, what is 4 to the second power? 16. So this is just 16 times 4 to the x, where now, instead of having a horizontal translation of moving it to the right, I have actually simultaneously performed a vertical dilation by a factor of 16, because that 16 is multiplied on the outside. So the same function is both a horizontal translation two units to the right and a vertical dilation, so we've taken 4 to the x and vertically dilated it by a factor of 16. Since I have vertically dilated this by a factor of 16, and now that there's a number in front of the factor, that means that the a value, the initial value, is 16, and my base stays the same. The base is still 4. 
So a times b to the x power, a is my initial value of 16, 4 is my factor, so this has an initial value of 16, and it is growing by multiplying by 4 each time. These two functions are equivalent. They're just written in similar, but wait, that's not the word I was looking for. They're written in different forms, but they're equivalent functions. Okay, we can do the same thing with the other property. Okay, so the second box here says that we can use the power property that was green, if you're following my color scheme from earlier, to show that every horizontal dilation, which is where we multiplied by a number on the inside of an exponential function, is equivalent to changing the base of the exponential function itself, which is crazy. You're not normally allowed to change the base of an exponential function. Normally, the bases stay the same at all times. You don't change the base ever, except when doing this kind of problem. So for example, letter B, which you guys have already told me, has, is 2 to the x that has been horizontally dilated by a factor of 1 third. I can rewrite this using the power property. If you have a power raised to a power, you're multiplying them. So if I undo that, here's a power raised to a power, 3 to the x, sorry, 2 to the third raised to the x power would be 2 to the 3x. You would multiply 3 and x. So I've just kind of undone that step. Well now, what is two to the third power? Eight. eight. So really this is like writing eight raised to the x power. I have completely changed the base of this entire function. It's still equivalent to two to the three x power because two to the third is eight. So eight to the x and two to the three x are the exact same shape on a graph. They would match up if you were to graph both of them. So now what we have done here is we have done 2 to the x change of base, which is not a normal name for a transformation, change of base to 8 to the x. That's what a sorry, horizontal dilation does to an exponential function is it essentially changes the base of the function. That's the main idea here today. If you have a horizontal translation, it is actually a vertical dilation. If you have a horizontal dilation, it is actually a change of base. We can manipulate these functions back and forth into different forms. Okay, we're gonna do the next two together just because I don't think it's clear just yet and you'll have practice problems later. If we look at C earlier, you guys told me that this is nine to the X horizontally dilated by a factor of two. That is 100% correct. But if we rewrite this using the power property, meaning we can do nine raised to the one half power raised to the X power, just basically pulling apart the X and the number that it's multiplied by, this uses that power property. Power to a power means multiply. So if you're multiplying, that means you do power to a power. Okay, cool. Now we have to use some additional um, properties here. If you look at the last property listed at the top of your paper, it says that if you have a fractional exponent, how can you rewrite that? Nine to the one half power is what? The square root of nine. So you really can just use all of the power properties or the different exponent properties together. What is the square root of 9? 3. So this is actually 3 to the x power. So 9 to the 1 half x is mathematically equivalent to 3 to the x. What we have done is we have done 9 to the x power with a change of base. I'm running out of room. A change of base to 3 to the x. Since we have done that horizontal dilation, we have done a change of base. For the last one, the reason I don't have the divide means subtract uh, rule listed is because it's actually more confusing than just using the multiplying means add property because they're essentially the same just with negative numbers. Meaning, if I look at this one, you guys already told me that this is 5 to the x horizontally translated one unit to the right. If I separate those, it might look like this. We would have five to the negative one power multiplied by five to the x power. Okay, power to a power means, sorry, multiply means add is what I meant to say. Multiply means add. If I'm adding negative numbers, it's subtracting. So I'm using the same rule. 
I'm avoiding the divide subtract rule here because it just honestly gets confusing. But if you have a number added or subtracted in the numerate in the exponent, you can pull it apart and give it to both bases. Well, we still have a property that we can use right here to simplify five to the negative one power. I don't really love leaving negative exponents, so what can I do with this to clean it up? What does five to the negative one power become? One fifth. one fifth. So this is one over five to the positive one power, which we don't write positive one powers, multiplied by five to the x. What we have done here is we have taken five to the x and we have vertically dilated it by a factor of one fifth. More importantly, we went from having an initial value of 1 to an initial value of 1 fifth, while our base stayed the same. So today is all about manipulating these exponential functions, using those exponent properties at the top of the page to identify different transformations that are occurring to the same graph. These are all mathematically equivalent. Their graphs would be exactly the same if you were to graph them in each and every form. They would be the exact same. So we're just manipulating things back and forth from these different rules.